right, so the review of the results for this workshop, um, it's actually very brief and um, it's, I'm going to show it here quickly. Uh, we were asked to fill out this table with results and we had uh, three questions that I'll answer as, as we go over them individually. Um, so the first thing that I want to point out is that the file that we created has two scenarios, uh, one average day and one peak flow. And the peak flow, as we saw when I answered the previous question, is um, basically we used an extreme flow factor method. We used a table um, to increase our average flows um, to represent what the peak flows would be. Okay, um, And the way we did this average day scenario was we manually input all our elements and we entered um, eight inch pipes, uh, eight inch pipe diameters for all our pipes. They're made out of concrete. And for our manholes, we input sanitary loads. So we could see that here we use the unit loads um, and we entered the flows. And we also input invert elevations at all our nodes. And I'm going to run this so we can see the results. Um, when you get this warning message about the conduit not meeting minimum cover or velocity constraints, um, if you're doing an analysis run like we are, uh, what I mean by that is if you uh, in the calculation options that we created, remember, uh, when we use the GVF convex sewer cat solver, we can run it in either analysis or design mode. Um, by default, we always run analysis, uh, but if you are doing the automated design, so if you're using the software to tell you what the diameter should be, then you would want to run it as design. Uh, we'll actually do that on one of the workshops in this class. Um, but the reason that I brought that um, no user notification up is that even though we're running it as an analysis, we are getting um, warnings saying we don't meet certain constraints that we haven't actually set yet. Um, and that is because automatically the software always uses some um, um, design constraints. So it reads these values uh, that are by default. So because we are not really setting that up, we can safely disregard those. Okay. All right. So when we run it, uh, I have actually set a color coding by flow and velocity. And actually, did I um, let me go back to my extreme flows because I may have made some Is looking suspicious that everything is set to zero. No, I did set that up correctly. Um, let's see. So the reason it's showing zero is because we have this as cubic feet per second. Um, so in cubic feet per second, this does um, show up as zero, which is why somewhere in the workshop, they had us change this to gallons per minute. Okay? Because we have, um, you know, our flows are kind of small for this little system. Okay? Um, so now that we have results, I'll walk you through the results table that we have here. So we have results for both average day and peak flow. And we were asked about conduits 10, 11, and 13. So I'm going to hold down the control key and then left click on those three elements uh, to see the result for all three at the same time. And you can do that by selecting, uh, doing right click and selecting data table. And I'm actually going to show the results for both average day and peak flow scenarios for my three um, conduits. And I'm, I'm interested in flow, so I will leave this as flow. 
and you will notice not available because I did not run the other scenario so let me just quickly run that and hopefully um, we'll get the results now so we have conduit 11 average and peak, conduit 10 average and peak, and 13 average and peak. Um, so if you look at your results table, which I'm going to bring over here, uh, for conduit 10 we had 18 for average and 102 for peak flow, for 11, 4 and 23, and for 13, 12 and 68. Okay, so that's where those numbers came from. Now that's kind of the fastest way to see them. You could have also individually go to the results and you can here select um, all the properties by default or you can also um, do like profile and just show fewer uh, results. Or you can, uh, like we had done here, create annotations and read your results from here as well. Okay, um, the other question on that table was um, about velocity for a particular pipe. So we were asked about CO4. And another thing you can do is you can go over here to the properties and start typing velocity. And here you can see that for our average day scenario, the velocity Average velocity is 1.65, so that's the number that we see here. Round it up to 1.7, and now if I move, if I leave the, this like that and switch to my peak flow scenario, you can see that it also filters my properties, and that gives me 2.6 as the average velocity in the middle of the conduit. So those are the results that we're seeing here. Uh, we could do the same for depth. And you can see mm, over here that we had a peak flow of 0 0.38 feet. So you can see the depth out for that particular pipe. So that would be the depth arriving at MH1 and um, same thing if I can just click here I'm going to switch to the average day scenario and you can see it's 0.16 feet okay so that's where we're reading our uh, values let's take a look at where we read the profile description and we're going to do that for conduit CO2 so I'm going to have to clear this filter here, otherwise it won't um, show me. And I'm going to start typing profile. And you can see there's the profile description. And that actually does not change between average and peak flow. Uh, so we can see that that's a rather um, steep slope. And that's why we have that uh, S type of uh, profile, so it's slope. Uh, if you wanted to look at the profiles, um, see, it's kind of hard to see, but this is the CO6 um, through CO1 profile. And this one, I don't know, I'm going to create a new one. And we'll do it from this one so we can get to see the profile of that CO2. Okay, so you can see that there's um, kind of a steep slope there, and you can see that um, the flow is kind of um, shallow, and we would it would be consistent with um, with our profiles. Um, so if you want to also look at other information, like what is the actual slope there, uh, you can see it's 0 0.013. Uh, notice also that you could, again, change the units here if you like to see it in, like, percentage. Uh, well, it's 1.3%, perf uh, so it isn't too much, but that's how you would actually see that information. 
All right, and for the last question that we have, um, or the, the last item on that table, is the flow out uh, on average day 52 and 290. And you can actually see that on the screen right now because we have flows. So we can read the two different values there. All right, so it's pretty easy to see where those numbers are coming from. Um, does this system have adequate capacity? Uh, different ways to see that. Um, again, let's look at our profiles. The pipes aren't even flowing halfway for our average day. So typically we estimate capacities based on our peak flows. And let's take again a look at those profiles. Uh, so no overcharging, no start charging. We don't see any pressurized, pressurized pipes. Um, seems to be good. Uh, and as I mentioned earlier, you could evaluate. And I'm going to go to a flex table for all the conduits. So you can double click where it says conduit table. And another indicator is depth of a rise. Um, so you can see here that I have maximum depth. Uh, again, this is a steady state, so depth or maximum depth is going to be the same. And um, you can sort this one descending. So you get to see that um, conduit CO4 is the fullest, you could say, at 58% of capacity. So it has... It's like 42% almost um, capacity left. So yeah, this and we were looking at the um, peak flow results, so we have plenty of capacity. Um, the second question asked if uh, this system had an okay velocity with the understanding that pipes are designed for a, typically for a velocity of two feet per second. Um, we could go and we have color coded by velocity and you could open this legend to look at the color coding and see what the values are so the light blue are less than two feet per second um, and that's mostly because you can see the flows there are 11 11 up to 23 um, and then anything in dark blue or pink um, would be okay. Okay, so there's a question. Will you uh, or get a warning message if a pipe is searcher? Um, you you get a you get a message if um, you don't uh, if they're only surcharging. I'm not sure. Let's let's test that. Uh, I'm going to add an inflow here. Uh, so let's see. I'm going to add an additional flow here. Let's say I will add a thousand gallon per minute and rerun. Okay. Yeah, so you have we have one here that says one or more conduits are operating under pressure. Uh, in fact, there's one flooding. So if I double click on that one, it tells me which pipes are under pressure, uh, which are CO1, 2, 4, 5, and 7. So let me close out of this, and I can select all the elements. Um, Oh, let me move this out of the way so you guys can see it. Um, it basically selected all these five ones that are affected by that um, extra flow that I put in there. Yep, great question. Um, so let me remove this flow <laughs> so that we can uh, continue with the last question. Um, well, the last question actually didn't even need me to remove that, but um, it said, why did I work with units uh, for 
flow in gallons per minute. Um, we have entered some loads in gallons per day, but we always find whatever seems more seems to make more sense, right? So if I were to change this to, like we saw initially, cubic feet per second, they were all zero or really small numbers, uh, but gallons per day would give very hard to grasp values. So you kind of um, switch uh, to whatever seems more fitting for those numbers. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.